all right so very good morning just give me a thumbs up in the chat box so that i can understand i am audible to everybody we need to start in time because we are going to talk about the professional uh, the uh, etiquettes netiquettes and the uh, grooming and the first one is being in time so i would just like to see your yes if you are able to hear me all right so wonderful so it's great great uh, time for me uh, we are going to have next one hour together and let me tell you one thing that today i am working from home and uh, i would like to show you that this environment and this is also the time for household works as well so maybe little bit of noise little bit of disturbances please pardon me for that uh, because this pandemic situation has put us all at our homes but we are working from home so i would request i would seek your support in this journey for next one hour let me begin my session today and the very first thing here since this presentation is also being broadcast at various social media i would like to introduce my university to all the attendees participants and those who watch it offline also on the screen i am there and that is my university marwadi university which is situated at rajkot and rajkot is the part of gujarat very well known for its own uh, mechanical parts production so we are the mechanical hub we are the mechanical parts diesel engine hub and if you go to wikipedia to understand about rajkot city the wikipedia says that in mission mangal or mission mangal more than 65% of the mechanical parts were actually sourced from this region from rajkot so we are very lucky and very proud that we had contributed a lot in the mission mangal um rather mission mars also we can say so there is my university marwadi university on your screen very progressive university we are the only institution and the mother of marwadi university you can say Mar marwadi education foundation which is the only institution in entire gujarat which is recognized as an a plus uh, rank by the national accreditation and uh, affiliation council that is called nac committee they assess the institutions across the country and they give the ranking and we are a plus ranked by the nac committee so this is my university more than 22 states more than 22 countries students are studying here they are shaping their career and their future and their participants and i lead the department called learning and development i have a terrific team of facilitators along with me who conduct the workshops in online offline mode throughout the year so moving forward on my screen i have shown you the platform which you are using currently this is the zoom platform and you can see here on your right hand side in the bottom there is one non verbal reaction also one button which is given non verbal reaction any time if you want to react if you click on it it will give you one thing like thumbs up or the clap two reactions so any time if you want if you feel like you can clap and you can give thumbs up also that is non verbal reaction given to the participants you can use this feature the middle one is the chat box if you want to comment anything want to say something you can frankly comment and say there in the chat box and if you have any question you can also type your question in the chat box 
but i would prefer you start your question with one letter called q so that i can understand that this is the question and this is not the question for example if you have certain comments i can understand that this is comment and this is not a question so i would like to take the questions at the end last 10 to 15 minute of my talk today so that i would be able to figure out what are the questions and what are the comments and your uh, views during this session so please this do in the chat box and the last one is your audio and video setup if you want to speak anything you can unmute yourself but since uh, we have kept it mute participants so anything you want you can simply uh, talk in the chat box because we don't want the uh, bandwidth issue if you open your video and your audios maybe some challenges regarding this bandwidth may have so keeping that in mind we have kept the participants in mute and videos off but any time if you want to say something please write in the chat box i will keep an eye on the chat box also now today's session which i had but before that i would like you to participate in a small poll i want to see what technology you are using at your place because i am sure you all are also operating from your homes also so i am floating a small poll simply give your views and that is the technology poll so first poll is here and the question is what devices currently you are is using right now so i am launching the poll for you please respond what devices are you using right now can you go ahead and poll there are four options desktop laptop cell phone ipad or others okay so voting already started 75% vote i have received very good i understand that so very nice so i am going to end the poll and share the result it gives me an understanding that 67% of the people they those who are using the laptop today and 33% they are using the cell phone uh, very good very nice that was my expectation also when we are working from home mostly we are connected on the cell phone so using cell phone but one thing i have seen when i attend any webinar or conduct any webinar or any seminar e seminar rather using mobile phone it gives little difficulty little challenge for me to participate so for my understanding i wanted to know that how many of you are on cell phone so that i can if i do some activity will you be comfortable doing that or uncomfortable so i got this point so i am going to end this result and another one i wanted to understand the second poll for you that is what internet connection you are currently using if you are using laptop so do you have the dedicated broadband do you have a wifi dongle do you have mobile hotspot or any other you are using so you can go ahead and poll click your answers also in this regard so that i can understand how stable your connection is all right so i have received 50% voted vote so far i will keep it for 20 more seconds open yeah now it is increasing 66% votes i have received let's go ahead and vote so all right so i am going to end this poll now i also got this point and i had the idea in my mind the poll result says that 75% people they are using using the mobile hotspot and 25% they are using the uh, dedicated connection that is also uh, perceived i understand because we are at home so cell phone is the very very uh, useful device in our reach so using cell phone hotspot but uh, it also gives me a learning that sometimes the cell phone hotspots when you are using 
it creates little bandwidth issue so when i play some video it doesn't go smoothly so that is for my understanding that you are using hotspot so maybe hotspot is also okay but sometimes you can connect your if you are using laptop using with the hotspot of mobile you can use the your usb cable that gives a good connection of the internet so now coming to the today's uh content here it is one picture on your screen and i have taken it as a caselet i want to discuss with you and would uh, see your comment also on this picture this is the picture uh, do you recognize can you write in the chat box what is this picture all about can you guess just guess what picture it could be go ahead and write in the chat box just by looking at the picture what is your thinking what do you think this picture is all about your wild guess any guess oh it is not so difficult yeah nowadays it is stopped i think people are not traveling so now i am giving the hint to you this picture is taken from an aircraft which is about to take off and the crew member the air hostess she is giving some training some learning to the passengers many times when we travel the crew members the air hostess she gives us some training for our learning and that is also one of them when the aircraft is about to take off the air hostess is giving us some training and especially if you are seated next to the emergency gate then they give you special training and they ask some questions also and they tell you that in emergency situations how to operate the exit emergency exit how to operate the oxygen mask how to operate the exit window exit doors and all and they do their best they use their verbals non verbals and they are very good in their non verbals and uh, in every flight they do and those who are the frequent travelers they have got so many trainings of this air hostess for operating the exit door in emergency cases i'm sure you all must have also experienced uh, this training so after this training after this learning my question is that how many of us we feel really honestly confident in operating the exit door if there is an emergency you need to give me the answer very honestly i don't want build up answer because i want to make a point here so if you give me your honest answer then only it will help me so i had another poll on it which is i'm going to launch for you and there it is on your screen can you confidently operate the emergency exit during a flight emergency please honestly respond there are two options one is yes other one is no so then i will move forward if you can answer okay so i have got 50% votes so far others please join in voting those who joined little late i'm talking about one special learning and training which takes place in the aircraft offered by a very competent air hostess using all her abilities her competencies verbal and non verbal 
to make the passengers learn how to operate the emergency ex exit. Okay, so almost I have got votes and the poll result I'm going to share with you. And result is as per my expectation, the result says that 100% of people they are not confident in operating the emergency exit door of an aircraft if there is an emergency. And that was my expectation also. That's what I was expecting. So my next question is, why? Why 100% people say that, no, we are not confident in operating the exit door of an emergency in situation of emergency of an aircraft and we have experienced of so many sessions conducted by air hostess during the journey before every takeoff you get a training you get some learning and that is also very important you know if you don't know how to operate the emergency exit door then in emergency you are simply going to die nothing else so very, very important for every passenger to learn. And a very competent air hostess, she does it. But 100% result says that nobody can operate it. What can be wrong in this learning adventure? Why we did not learn? And that is my question. If you can give your answer in the chat box, I'll be happy. What do you think is the response? Why do you think people are not able to operate the emergency exit doors even after receiving so many sessions, so many learning on the journey? So can you write if you, if you can tell me what is your guess, why people are not? I'll tell you what my understanding is about this journey, why people are not able to operate it. There should be many reasons. Maybe people are busy in their own world. Maybe they are not, they don't want to learn it. But it is very important. Maybe they have not ever operated. They had never been in that situation. That's why they, they didn't learn it. So how the learning takes place before I take you to the topic today, which is the professional grooming, how the learning takes place. When I was doing some research, some background work on the learning, how humans learn, I got this wonderful Sanskrit shloka by our own Rishi Munis in past. And these Rishis has written this one shloka and it says that how learning takes place, beautiful. They have written, the humans learn by Acharyat Pad Madatte Padam Sishya Swamedhaya. So, Brahmacharibhya Padam Padam Kala Kramencha. Again, repeat Acharyat Pad Madatte Padam Sishya Swamedhaya. So, Brahmacharibhya Padam Padam Kala Kramencha, which means one fourth from the teacher, any student, any learner rather, one fourth only from a teacher, from a trainer, from a facilitator, one fourth from her or his own intelligence, one fourth from the classmates, from the peers, from the colleagues, from the friends, and one fourth only with time. Time is also one of the uh, contributor in the learning of any learner. So keeping this philosophy in mind, today if I would be able to at least reach one fourth of my content to you, I think I would be 100% happy and satisfied with my sessions today. But even less than one fourth, that is also okay for me if I would be able to make my point and reach you. Because this mantra says that next one fourth you will learn by your own intelligence. 
next one fourth by your own colleagues peers and friends and last one fourth time will make you learn so with this philosophy i am just coming to my topic today's topic and please remember i am not going to complete the syllabus or uh, what topic i have or what slides i have to just complete i would like to do justice to this topic therefore i may take time but i am sure i also said that as a professional grooming you need to be in time so start in time we started dot at 11 so i will end at 12 so that you have any other engagement you can but if anything is remaining maybe next webinar i would take it forward so let's move ahead the byline which i had used in my creative also it says that your professional grooming is greater recommendation than any letter of reference and that was not my saying it was said by aristotle he said that your professional grooming when you are professionally groomed then there is no bigger no greater recommendation no greater letter of reference than that particular grooming and i'll come to this i have highlighted this word professional grooming i don't want to keep it at a very superficial level i want to go little deep what does professional grooming mean i'm not only con concerned about the appearance i'm not concerned about your way of walking your way of talking i'm not concerned about that when it comes to professional grooming i am talking little deeper little down i will take you also there that is my agenda that is my objective and the screen says you must also have heard this story in your childhood in fact all of us we have heard this story the story of four blind men and beautiful story they used to live in one village and one day one elephant arrived in that village and these four blind men they had never seen any elephant in their life so they came close to the elephant and they tried to figure out what elephant could be if you can look at the picture also one fellow who was actually able to touch the trunk of the elephant and he understood it okay so it is a snake maybe elephant looks like a snake he came to a conclusion the other fellow who actually touched the ear of the elephant his conclusion was no 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 it is just like a fan the third guy who was actually able to touch the tail of the elephant he said no elephant is like a rope the other guy who was able to touch the stomach of the elephant he said that the elephant is like wall likewise so what all of them they come to a conclusion they all were wrong they were all away from the reality why i am sharing this story is when you go to internet to get the knowledge or information about any particular aspect you get millions and millions of pages on that particular subject and the beauty of internet is anybody can upload anything so finding out the authentic information if you are not from academics i see there are students also those who have joined today and many academicians also many many researchers also they have joined so to find out the authentic information is also challenging task so when you go to find out the definition of a professional grooming means many internet websites will give you a very superficial knowledge about the professional grooming they don't take you deep down and it is very challenging for us to understand which is the correct one that's why i say that you need to learn also the skill how to come to the right source authentic source of information like the websites which is .edu i like means they are the educational websites they may give some 
authentic information so this is the way to reach so in today's definition of professional grooming i'm not going to go by the definition available on the internet i'm going to take you little down little deeper and remember professional means a person who is trained to perform a job or task using his set of competencies successfully that is called the professional but any professional is a human being isn't it when a human being he becomes a professional he brings his own personal attributes along with him to become a professional who gets the training of course the human being gets the training to become a professional to use his set of competencies to perform this task successfully so even a professional will have his or her own personal competencies deeper down in themselves and the professional is built on the top of of a human being on the personal attributes of a person the professionalism is being built which means if i want to groom myself professionally i need to go little down in side of myself and little down there is a word called the personal attributes and that is what i am going to show today to you this is what i am going to talk today with you is personal attributes i have a small sticky note in my hand i call it pencil q and that is what is available inside deep down of a professional the training which you get as a profession is based on the personal attributes of you as an individual as a human being so my today's topic is the personal attributes on which the professional professionalism is being built so that is what i am going to talk today and remember the personal attributes are actually the umbrella there are many many competencies there are many many attributes many traits like your habits your communication your behavior the empathy which you show this is all under the umbrella of the personal attributes so we all learn what all are those personal attributes which i need to develop which i need to learn which i need to grow but if i share one example here of your courtyard my courtyard anywhere if you go you find such very very groomed trees i like this beautiful picture it gives me the foundation for my talk today well groomed well trimmed but can we say it is professionally groomed yeah somebody else must have done it but when it, when it was when it was growing it was not like this it was different the the the, the leaves of trees were there all around in every direction but somebody came and they trimmed it in a particular shape they wanted they had certain things in their mind and they trimmed it so the point which i want to drive today from this picture is please listen to me carefully we all are running to know what i need to develop what i need to learn what i need to grow but my submission is we also need to learn what i need to drop what i need to leave what i need to delete from my personal attributes as i said very important point personal attribute is the collection it is an umbrella of so many habits so many traits of a personality we all learn these are the quality these are the good things i need to develop i need to learn i need to grow but at the same time today i am want all of us to be aware that there are certain things in my personality which i need to drop which i need to delete which i need to get rid of so what are those things 
that we need to learn also to groom professionally and from all these important personal attributes the one attribute which i have selected today is the next one which i am presenting to you and this is a very popular theory i will share the reference at the end of my talk you can go and take it further also if you want any further reading in this context you can also read further i'll give the reference at the end but i will start this personal attribute by a small caselet a small case study and the case study is here for your reference on your screen is it visible just give me yes or no in the chat box or non verbal reaction you can just say yeah yeah <laughs> good wonderful wonderful all right so this caselet i am just going to read i am happy to receive your responses i am reading the caselet for you take one minute time to reflect on it and put yourself in the shoe of the protagonist and then respond the caselet says that one day the dean of engineering was on his routine class observation round in the morning at 9:30 am he found students making noise in one of the classes and he tried to find out the faculty in the class he couldn't see the faculty there because faculty was not there near the podium he saw faculty busy talking with one student at the end of the class and laughing not paying attention to the whole class class was left at its own and it was an issue of poor classroom management later the faculty received a memo from the dean's office about the incident just one disclaimer it is a caselet it is nothing to do with the reality or any real situation it is just hypothetical situation so how many of you are with the protagonist the dean how many of you favor dean that yes it was a poor classroom management if you say yes or no in your chat box i would be able to understand those who say that yeah i think in my opinion the dean is okay the class was making noise they were there at their own and the faculty was laughing with the student at the end so it is a classroom management issue how many of you say yes and are there with the dean can you respond in the chat box yes or if you say no then you can also say no in your chat in the chat box also please respond okay so hum say no he is not with the dean's office okay what could be the reason why why do you think no no generally what happens every human being we we take some decisions and uh, i'm sure i'm also not there with the dean but many many times we perform we work like this in fact i take my own example in my case i respond or responded many times like this case in my career i know that we are all human beings but i'm just going to make you aware that this is happening and what is happening at the backdrop what is happening behind that is a theory given by mr peter senge peter senge in 1955 he wrote a book that is called fifth discipline and i'm going to share yeah right so hum you are very correct there might be something else with the faculty maybe they had some 
some reasons that is true but many times the administrations the senior people behave like this in fact many times i have responded behaved like this with my team member unknowingly i don't want to do it for example i was in a staff meeting and there were 10 people in the staff meeting i saw people they were very very serious one person was presenting some document and people were very much sincerely responding some of them they were making notes some of them were nodding some of them were actually asking questions in a very participative manner but i also noticed one person who was actually frequently watching her own wrist watch arranging her her chair frequently and many times in that meeting she was watching her own wrist watch what does it mean i have felt that she is not paying attention i felt that she is in hurry she wants to leave as early as possible i felt that she is completely not there in the meeting today and i asked a very specific focused question to her and she responded also so my action yeah he should not have directly issues a moment memo to them but before knowing the reason behind the situation a good leader would first communicate with the associate <laughs> of course i'm happy i'm happy soham i'm very happy to to see your participation every book has two sides of course and that is what my topic today that is what i wanted to discuss today and the the way it is happening the backdrop behind that's what important for us he should have not responded but we respond i took my example of that meeting and that is called the concept by the book called fifth discipline that is the ladder of inferences here on your screen by peter senge he says he says that we as a human being we very quickly climb the ladder of the inferences he gave an a kind of you know picture pictorial diagram he gave a small analogy as a ladder and very quickly we climb the ladder and we take an action to the top of the ladder it is also a phrase when i react without thinking consciously to any situation i say that oh i'm sorry i was at the top of the ladder many times when i'm there in the traffic when people cut me off and they take their bike and their car i really get pissed off i react i say that this is jerk he doesn't know to follow the rules that is my immediate reaction and that is what i jump at the top of the ladder of the inferences in many day to day life we jump at the top of the ladder and when we do it personally that we carry at our workplace also in the workplace situations we also jump at the top of the ladder and look at the picture i want to just explain it a little bit what happens there is an ocean of information there is an ocean of data with every incident every person and please remember it is very important when we are dealing with other people when we are working in a team when we are working with other human beings of course when you are working completely with machine you may not require this theory but if you are working with a human being you would require this theory of ladder of inferences lot of data is available the ocean of information ocean of data if you look at at the bottom of this particular stair there is an ocean of data but you know we cannot process all the information available all around us about any situation about any person we cannot we don't have the ability so what we do and see this entire all seven steps it all happens very quickly before we realize that it is happening it happens and we jump and we reach at the top of the ladder very fast we start climbing the the stairs of the ladder so first thing 
at the bottom lot of data lot of information is available and from that data since we cannot execute cannot process all the available data about any situation any person or any incident at any particular time what we do we observe some set of data we take some set of data or information just imagine just like a camera when i put a camera camera is not able to read all the information available around it it can only observe in a particular direction and this much of information this much of data so the observation which we have is a kind of camera which takes very little set of data or the information so there were so many things in the meeting many people were doing good things they were actually making notes even in this case many classes were going on very well dean did not notice he used to look at the set of data first observation about this class or about this person when i looked at it and now based on that observation i started climbing the stairs of the ladder the second one says that i selected the data i observed there is a chaos i selected the data i observed meeting is going on there are 10 people in the staff meeting people are making notes people are actually paying attention one person i selected this person she is watching at the wrist watches she is not actually paying attention i selected this data so far i have not added any meaning to it i am just looking at the data now the third step what i do i interpret okay so i add meaning to it and meaning to it because of my own upbringing because of my own experiences because of my own uh, experience with that person maybe in past also so i start interpreting i think she is in hurry i think she wants to go i think she is not paying attention so i start adding meaning to it and once i add meaning then i make assumptions assumptions which means that okay why she is doing she is not actually the disciplined person she is not very uh, prepared for the meeting today or so on and so forth i make my own assumptions based on my selected data which i had or my interpretation which i had and then i come to conclusion that okay this person is not serious today this person is poor in classroom management this is my conclusion and then if it happens repeatedly i make my own belief that okay this person always does like this he is not good teacher he has certain problems always his classes are always like this i i i come to a belief a conclusion like this and then i sent a memo i took an action and as soham mentioned that he should have directly not issued a memo he could have called that person so what happens if you just keep this ladder of inference in your mind and as soham said that call that person and ask him talk to him he or she will be able to give her side of the story or his side of the story and the moment we hear her story what happens my ladder of inferences immediately gets broken in between when she told me that sorry sir i have another project which you had given me yesterday and that is what i am preparing i am working on so immediately my assumptions my conclusions my belief my interpretation all changed but it happened when she actually shared her information to me and then my ladder of inference got short circuited it got broken but it required that person but my submission today is that this ladder of inference can be broken by myself proactively also i am again repeating very important this ladder of inferences before anybody else breaks it before that person comes to me and shares the information many times that person like in this case without calling that person 
I arrived at a conclusion. I took an action and sent a memo. So many times, person is not coming, not available. So I can also break my ladder of inferences by cutting it short. And where to cut it short? That is called you need to reflect. You need to develop yourself as a reflective practitioner. We need to develop as a reflective practitioner before we come to a conclusion. Before we ask. or send an action or take an action we need to go back one step back and reflect and break this look at that the conclusion here which i have arrived the conclusion here that this person is not serious today is because of the previous step which is my assumption which means it is actually because of the assumption which i had made about this person i came to this conclusion so many times every time when my conclusion is based on my assumption i will come to the same outcome i am not going to reach so peter senge wrote in his book that we need to break this we need to short circuit this ladder of inference in between you need to go down so this belief and selecting information for example when you are dealing with people when we are dealing with others many times you get disagreement you don't agree with somebody else what he or she is saying what i am saying you may not agree with me but why there is a disagreement again go back to the ladder of the inferences there is a lot of data available there is a lot of information available there is an ocean of information from that ocean of information you observed one set of data and from that observation you selected certain data and you did not select certain data but somebody else he might have selected some other data some other information which you did not select therefore when he selects the information which you did not select at the time of selecting the information and then climbing the steps of the ladder definitely when he goes with his own set of data or selection his views will be different than my views or your views i don't guarantee that what selected data i selected what information i selected my colleague my peers my friends and you will also select the same data same information and that's why there are disagreements at the workplaces that's why there are disagreements in your homes in my family life so the first thing is that when there are disagreements in life in the workplaces we need to go back to the ladder of inferences and come down the moment you are going to react or respond to take action the ladder of inferences says that you need to come down from the top of the ladder to the selection of the data to the information and the best way to do it take contrary data select different data question your assumption question your belief question your interpretation why why i am thinking like this this person is not attentive what is my data what is my information okay she was watching so ask questions on your assumptions ask questions on your data on your selected data and then look at contrary data you create your own contrary data what else could be possible maybe she has a problem maybe she is waiting for a very emergency urgent important call to her so when i create a contrary data when i come to different set of data my assumptions will change my interpretation will change my conclusion will change and then my action will change and as soham mentioned you can ask that person to give his or her view or her data it is easy it is okay but proactively we as a professional we can also break this ladder of inference any time hope i am making sense so before i go at a professional workplace i need to understand one thing that i should not respond from the ladder of the inference from the top of the ladder of the inference when you are in a conversation with somebody please keep checking at the background of your mind 
that at what level I am in the ladder of the inference? Have I made my assumptions? Have, have I concluded it? Have, is it my interpretation? Is it different? Can I ask, ask some questions? So this is a very important theory which I wanted to share in today's discussion. And there is a small activity I wanted to do with you. I will share this link with you. You can download this. It is to make you aware about your own blind spot. This ladder of inferences is actually because of our own inbuilt God given blind spots. So how this blind spot works, I have a small printout in my hand. I don't know if my camera is able to show you. And there is a dot and a plus sign. On the left hand side, on my left, there is a plus sign. And on the right hand side, there is a dot. I will share this document with you all to make you aware that we as a human being, we all have a blind spot. And this ladder of inference is actually the blind spot. So we need to recognize and come down in the ladder of the inferences before we climb up. So this exercise says that you simply take this document at the arm length, arm length from your face and from left hand, you simply close your left eye and bring this document 30 centimeter to your face and stare at the plus sign. Stare at the plus sign. Look at the plus sign. Bring it closer to your face. And you will recognize that the black dot which was already there earlier, it disappeared. It is not there. You can do this exercise at your home. And it is, I mean, applicable both the side. If I just upward down, and then I close my eyes, one left eye from the left hand and take this 30 centimeter and stare at that particular left side plus sign or the spot, the other one disappears. I can see the full page, but I'm not able to see that particular dot. It is there, it is available, but I'm not able to see that. What went wrong? What is the reason behind that? I'll share this document with you in the chat box, you can download it. But the point which I'm making is that we all have the blind spots. And that is God gifted. Let us not climb to the ladder, top of the ladder very quickly. Let's come down at the ladder and look at that. If we look at the same case again, which we had, as Soham has already mentioned, I took time, I went back, I asked questions about my assumptions, about my interpretation, about my conclusion, and then change my decision, change my action. That will make a very healthy relation at your workplace. So recognize your own blind spot and don't operate at the top of the ladder quickly. That is my message from this session. Important message I want to give. So when I look at it in the context of our own workplace, this is the screen which I wanted to share with you, which is reflected here. So this blind spot is one attribute which I have to drop from my, remember the tree leaves, there are certain leaves which I need to drop, I need to leave, I need to trim, these are the things. So blind spot, recognize blind spot is there. So what happens if you look at this equation which I have given here, your personal attributes, if you look at the green arrows, if your personal attributes are improving, it is going up you are becoming more and more aware about your personal attributes and developing it, growing it, learning about it. Then what happens? Your relationship at the workplace also goes up. It becomes friendly. It becomes very, very friendly and productive. Plus work culture improves. Look at the green arrow here. Green arrow. Work culture improves. Workplace improves. And your productivity also goes up when your personal attributes improve. So how your personal attributes are connected with your professional grooming, this is how. But if you look at the red arrow here on your screen, if your personal attributes are going down, remember nature does not keep it at a stable position. If you are not doing something to improve it, 
nature will automatically deteriorate it if there is a ground where nothing is going to be uh, planted taken care nature will produce all garbage there similarly very important point i am just repeating again if you are not doing something to improve your personal attributes nature will take it down in negative direction and that is what my red screen or red is showing here red arrow is showing here if your personal attributes are not getting improved by yourself you are not making efforts you are not taking some training some learning on it it will go down and if the personal attributes goes down your relationship with people with peers with colleagues will go down your work culture will be down and then productivity will go down and then you start looking for change i don't fit in this culture i don't like this place i want to go somewhere else and many people they leave organizations because of that culture which is built there and we are responsible to either improve that culture of that workplace or take it down the culture of that workplace so what i suggest this one point today i also had the netiquette but time is also not permitting me to go forward it is 3 minutes more in this session today i am very punctual and very particular about time i start in time i finish in time so i would see if any question if you have on this content please write it in the chat box i would like to take it now i have now couple of minutes i can take the questions and here is that book which i had shared which i wanted to you to read good book very nice this is called the fifth discipline which you can refer i have just taken a portion out of this this one i am dropping this chat box the link in the chat box if you have any question please feel free to ask the question otherwise if there is no question then i will sign it off but just let me give you this particular link to you where you can download the activity which i was sharing with you i have shared the link with you now in the chat box you can download that activity of the blind spot and i also have put the book fifth discipline by peter senge you can also get this book and read it i have taken a small portion out of it i see no question from your end so i will call it off now it is dot 12 pm from my end so i would say uh, you all please have a great day ahead thank you very much for joining today with me on this session thank you very much thank you so much thank you shivam thank you soham thank you very much babesh